Welcome back to the Diecast Show, collectors. Today I've got a whole bunch of 164 scale Hot Wheels, Matchbox, Green Light, some M2, Mini GT, everything coming out for a review here on the table in the Hot Wheels Museum, the Diecast Museum. Uh, probably going to take you for a little stroll around the museum somewhere in this video, but first and foremost, my opinion on the 2021 Hot Wheels that I have managed to find at my local stores, which have been pretty few and far between here in Canada due to lockdowns, now finally lifted halfway through the year. But I do have some cool cars, excited to complete that collection and answer any questions that may have come up in the comments recently. So why don't you sit down, enjoy the video, mash the old like button and the share button if you think it's worth doing so. Appreciate it very greatly and uh, enjoy the show. Thank you. Everything you see out on the table here is some recent acquisitions to my collection as of June 2021. I've already gone ahead and pre-opened some of these items, including mostly just green light items. I think that's all I've got open, actually. I do have the card backs here, so we can take a quick look at those, too, as well. Some very new items, though. I've got this awesome little Ford Cosworth Rally. This is from the Running On Empty series. Uh, I'll show you some more details on that as we go. It's got an opening hood, very detailed engine, and um, that's that's always a nice treat when you get a tiny little 164 scale car from Greenlight with this much detail in it. So absolutely fantastic. Some older Greenlights as well from the Estate Wagon Series 5. Somehow I had missed just about that whole collection, but I really needed to get these Plymouth Satellite Wagons. One is a police version. One is the regular version. They've got the drop-down tailgates. Uh, hitch and tow hitch. And uh, these are some duplicates. This is one of those what I call Men in Black uh, Ford LTD. This is actually from the Hollywood series. And there is the dude that comes with it. He's just hanging out in the back of this. Dually Driver Series 6 Ford F350 Lariat Blue Jeans Edition. Um, picked this up at the local diecast store. Thought I didn't have it already and forgot completely that I'd already done a big review on it. But it's a beautiful truck. It's all metal. What is brand new to me anyways is this Condor 2, 1972 Condor 2 RV with exquisite details all the way around. Thanks to green lights. Ingenuity. Got the real rubber dualies. Plastic base on this one. But it is a heavy, solid metal piece with great decorations and details. And that was from the HD Trucks Series 20. There's a few other trucks I would have liked to get, but they were not in stock at the local stores. So this will have to do. And uh, yeah, there's the Running on Empty Series for that first car we looked at. That was Series 12. Um, we've also picked up a whole bunch of mainline Hot Wheels from various stores in my area as well as this Moon-equipped Miho exclusive M2 1975 GMC Sierra Grand 15. And it's got that big utility box on the back. So we're going to open that up, take a closer look at it. Love my square body trucks. So had to get that. Also picked up this Mini GT, also a Miho exclusive. And this is an exquisitely detailed vehicle, as all Mini GTs are. Also true 164th scale. And one green light that is also new. Got this at the local Wally Fart. And it is the 77 Volkswagen Rabbit in this cerulean blue, I'm going to call it. From the V-Dub Club Series 12. Uh, I did see most of the rest of the cars in that series at the Walmart. But I decided I was going to save my pennies. Uh, spread the love around a few different series. It's just getting a little too expensive buying everything. Uh, a few duplicates, yes, I do hoard a few duplicates here and there, or quadruplicates, whatever you want to call it, but I absolutely love this Mercedes-Benz 500E, and uh, I think it's just a fantastic casting. It's really nice to see it head into the main line. Uh, I used to call these $1 cars. They're costing me $1.50 now. Thank you, inflation. Uh, but that's not so bad. I mean, they've been hovering between $1.30, $1.50 for a while now here in Canada. Uh, managed to pick up a few vintage pieces as well. Nothing I needed, just... Just the hoarder in me. Can't put them down when I see a good deal on these. So I picked up those at the local diecast store as well. Uh, Mid-90s stuff. This was a cool collection. I was only able to find the one car from the Factory 500 set. 500 horsepower, it says. Uh, I did manage to find the Bentley Continental Super Sport. And there were some other cars to be had in that series. But Walmart only had the one. So I bought that one. 
pretty nice. Uh, I've got this 57 Chevy from 1995 get in the fast lane. This one has an opening hood, and I'm pretty sure I don't have this one in my Matchbox collection. Then again, my Matchbox collection isn't nearly as complete as my vintage Hot Wheels collection, which you see around the Hot Wheels Museum where I do most of my filming. Uh, I have just really started to kind of think about filling in Matchbox collections from years back. Although I do have my own very complete modern Matchbox collection, pretty much dating from about 2000 and onwards. Plenty of cars there, but we're going to see more of those, of course, in some Matchbox year-by-year -year videos coming up at some point. Uh, a few more cool-looking cars, nothing from any complete series that I was able to get. I really like this 85 Chevrolet Camaro, and this is uh, from a series, I'm not really sure which series, 1 in 5, or 1 of 5 it says. Some other nice looking cars I probably would have picked up if I could find them, but uh, this is maybe a year old or so. This is definitely an older one, the Flying Customs. Just really like these uh, gold Hot One wheels when they have been reutilized. I think this is about a 2018 or 2019 release. There's some other vehicles, which likely I already have this set somewhere in my collection. Nice to get a little duplicate of that one though. I'm going to probably take that one out for a little spin on the table here. So let's get some of these remaining vehicles open, starting with... The uh, Moon Equipped, Golf, and uh, the Rabbit. Who's ready to open up some die cast with me? I've got my scissors ready. I think that Moon Equipped vehicle's coming out first. And I'm going to open it on camera with you guys. Share in the excitement, hopefully. Not too much plastic crinkling. And out it comes. Love the way the M2s are so well protected. Maybe a little too much plastic in the packaging. I don't mind these uh, these cases just being in those little cardboard kind of sleeved boxes they also make once in a while. But this is kind of the exclusive way of dealing with it. These are limited to 5,500 pieces, it says up in the left corner. And uh, there's no other information on the package. So let's take a look at this exquisite truck and get it out of this uh, kind of display, very nice display case the M2 provides. With the label for the truck on the base, now it's got a fairly detailed modern engine under the hood and uh, tinted windows all the way around. Let's see if we can just zoom in a little bit more and really get a look at some of the details. A little bit of factory oil sometimes present on these cars straight out of the box, so you just wipe that off with a rag and it makes a nice, don't, don't wipe too hard, you'll put some swirl marks in it, but a nice shiny rag, just a little... Um, microfiber rag just to give a little wipe there and what a gorgeous truck love those big uh, slicks on the back where normally it might have dualies and it says go with the moon that almost looked like it might be a drop down tailgate but it's actually cast one with the rest of the toolbox on the back of this truck and it's got the little hitch on the bumper and of course it's screwed to the base so I, I'm going to take this off the base off camera with my little tiny uh, number one Phillips head or star head screwdriver and so I'll save you the the pain of watching me go through this whole process and we'll get that one out very shortly but let's move on to the mini GT Golf uh, edition Land Rover Defender 110 very nice piece uh, with this display kind of cardboard matchbox style box underneath pretty much unnecessary but uh, let's go ahead and get that one opened up as well these are also going to be fairly limited i'm not sure no it doesn't seem to have a limiting number on the package so maybe not as limited as i thought mini gt is still kind of taking off in north america and uh, there's the cardboard box it's actually quite robust. Is there anything in there? Plastic. Got plastic in there. Okay. So a lot of plastic on these packagings. I really would like to see less wasteful packaging in the shipper pack in the in the shipper basically is what it is because I guess for people that don't open them up they like to have them well protected but realistically you can't even see the model all that well and I mean what is the point in protecting a piece of cardboard that's already protected by plastic with more plastic inside? I think that's probably a little unnecessary. Um, I know the companies don't want to see their products damaged in shipping, 
But, I mean, if Amazon can send stuff around the globe without damaging it, why can't uh, a big box of die-cast make it to the die-cast store uh, with some care? You know, a couple fragile stickers should cover it. But, hey, maybe I'm completely wrong. I'm not in the shipping business, so let's look at the details on this model. Fantastic. Jerry cans across the top, toolbox, a cooler, all sorts of good stuff. Big length of rope, recovery rope. It's got the snorkel on the front and uh, mirrors on the side. And see, these are the type of mirrors that don't break off easily because they're nice and flexible, very soft rubber. Terrific detail. This is all metal on the bottom too, Mini GT. And assembled with the Starhead screw on the front as well. So that's pretty cool. Nice straight and true wheels, actual real rubber spare tire. And now let's just go in side by side. You can see these trucks, uh, look, they pair well together. M2 and Mini GT, and even uh, green light, green light vehicles, they all look really proper together because they all have that actual true 164 scale going on. That is a beautiful model. I know there's a dirty version of that one too, so I'm going to have to pick that up somewhere along the line as I don't think I can live without it. I've got the V-Dub Club Series 12. This is the only green light car I think I had neglected to pre-open prior to the filming of this video. And uh, I don't want to take the sleeve out all the time. I do collect those little sleeves, especially when I've only got one car from the series and it's being opened. Um, this is just a beautiful little example of a Volkswagen from Greenlight. And uh, it's got that separate hood piece, which actually opens up, reveals a very nice little chrome engine in there. And uh, superb details on the wheels, the interior, and uh, all of the badging that this car would have had. It's a 77, just a tiny little thing. And let's just put it next to that uh, Ford Cosworth. Both would be suitable rally cars in their times. This Cosworth has obviously got a lot of extra performance parts on it. And uh, right-hand drive, too, I just noticed. That's pretty cool. So quite a nice set of cars from... Where did this one come from? They're running on empty. Uh, quite a nice set of cars. I just I had to limit myself once again. There was a lot of nice rally cars from different uh, generations, different eras. I chose not to pick up for the uh, review here because, as you can see, lots of new models from all over the place. And we're just jumping all over the place here. I was supposed to get this truck off, but I think we've kind of seen a lot of it already. So we'll leave that till later and continue on with the video looking at this vintage Matchbox 57 Chevy. The blister's already pooched, so I'm just going to sneak that car right out of the packaging. It's ancient. Six, uh, how long has it been there? 26 years this car has been in that packaging, so rightfully so. It's in mint condition just about. A few little uh, discolorations on the trunk. I'm not really sure what happened there. Very nice model. All metal from the Superfast series. 1979 copyright on this one is when that model was made. So, <laughs> very cool. Nostalgic piece. Let's put that next to a green light for size comparisons. You know, they look they look nice in the collection. All, all these cars look great. doesn't matter if they're ultra-realistic or ultra-nostalgic in my collection. They all fit together quite nicely. Uh, we've also got this newer matchbox, a 59 Dodge Coronet police car. I quite like the artwork on this. This car is just smashing through what looks to be hay bales and just peeling up someone's farm. If I saw a cop doing this to my farm, man, I don't know. I might have something to say, but he better have a good reason for chasing through the farm like that. Anyways, don't scare the livestock, right? So we've got these two cars. Uh, probably going to open them up. I'd like to open them up and put them somewhere in my collection. Uh, but then I'm going to forget all about where they came from for a future video. I'm not sure that's really that important. I really just would like to look at these cars. So let's open it up. We're going to put these straight to my museum walls uh, elsewhere in the Diecast Museum. Because I do really like this Bentley. That's a beautiful car. And if I was to get one car out of the Factory 500 set, 
I'm pretty sure it would have been this car anyways. So we do have some other really nice ones on here, however. And I will be keeping an eye out for those. But I'm not uh, not buying those things through eBay or anything like that. Same with this 105. Uh, I don't really need any of these cars. It would have been nice to have that 2016 Beamer. But uh, let's see what this car looks like. I like the packaging. It's kind of silly that these things cost two to three times as much as a normal car when really there's no difference in the quality of the car. And you're really just paying for different uh, card art. But they managed to sell them, so I guess they're going to keep doing that. And, uh, you know, as for collectors, it's nice to have these different sub-series. They are much more limited, I think, in production. But then again, not so limited that they're rare. I just really like the IROC Camaro. And we've got these ones here, too. I mean, this this one's on a nice, nice card. This card's all beaten up, though. And I already have this in my collection somewhere on the wall. This is the 7-spoke Canadian version variant, most likely. I don't know if these were sold uh, in the United States with these gold 7-spokes. I'll worry about that when we get to the appropriate blue card year-by-year -year video. So until then, let's take a look at some of the newer stuff from 2021. All right, now just before we get into the Hot Wheels, I did take the opportunity to remove this truck from its base so that you can have a full look at this front and top and bottom. And as you can see, the black metal paint extends all the way around. Assembled with screws, this M2 truck has big, huge drag strip style tires on the back and the smaller ones on the front so quite a nice piece and uh, that one looks great in the collection no doubt let's see what it looks like next to one of these really really nice bmw 500es i'm gonna open one of these up right now since i've got three now these are uh just a car that i'm interested in doing some customs with some wheel swaps perhaps and i just love these mercedes 500s as i'm sure many others do and why don't we take just for fun let's look at this one next to this old 380 se and this packaging is just toast so i wasn't really planning on keeping it in the package for too long now we can look at a hot wheel released in 1995 versus a hot wheel released in 2021 what do you guys think you think hot wheels is doing a good job i do I think they've really held true to their brand and they've got just the right amount of uh, tampo. That's what they call these deck, these details traditionally for Hot Wheels. They've got just the right amount of, of tampos and I have just the wrong amount of focus with this camera. I'm telling you guys, it's a struggle sometimes with it. Apologies for that, but you know, we'll get through it and uh, really nice cars. So let's put those down in the collection. We're going to go in for a closer look at all these cars parked together. So we'll just put them down for now and keep going here. Also like the Volvo 850 Estate Wagon. I've got uh, kind of a light, light yellow and a dark yellow. It's a little bit hard to see. I think maybe just a little bit of a heavier paint application on one. But this is a new color for 2021. And a casting I was quite excited about, so... Keep moving right along here. A couple more exciting castings from 2021. At least I do believe so. Uh, Lamborghini Urus and the Coensberg Jesco. Just an absolutely amazing looking little car. Now I'm not opening any of these other cars up unless I have a whole bunch of duplicates. Because as you're going to see later in this video where these cars are going. Uh, they are waiting patiently in line for the year by year videos. Uh, 2021 still weighs off as I creep through about 1993 at present. And so we're going to want to keep all these cars with their, you know, packaging and stuff for those future videos that you're going to see on these complete collections as we get there. So we've got a new Batmobile here. This is not a Batmobile I'm familiar with, so maybe I'm out of touch on my Batman movies, but that's a cool one. I like the look of it. The Arkham Knight Batmobile makes a reappearance. I remember this one from last year. It came in, I think, navy blue and metallic black or something like that. And if I didn't talk about these ones here, I really like the Land Rover Defender 90 with that flat blue paint. Not a huge fan of these brown plastic wheels, but I get what Hot Wheels is trying to do with those. And they've done a nice job with the mud, at least, so it makes sense. Nothing worse, though, than brown wheels without the mud splatter, which I've seen on a few other Hot Wheels. And Loopster, this is a Hot Wheel I always pick at least one up. 
and because you can clip them together front and back to each other and make a whole roller coaster out of these for your Hot Wheels race tracks. Uh, bone shaker, that's always a popular casting and even for me, I love the bone shaker. It's got that skull on the front, which is super cool. Chrome grilled skull. It's a real Hot Wheels in real life, one one scale. Beautiful car. It was a hard one to find at uh, the local store. It was I only found one and it's the Nissan R390 GTI. Brand new casting as far as I can tell. Absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to explore that model further with you guys. From then and now, we've got the 2017 Camaro ZL1. It's lacking uh, details on the front and back, in my opinion, but still a nice model. We've got La Trucca with this uh, artistic paint job on it from the Hot Wheel Art Cars. And 21 Ford Bronco. Absolutely cool, cool casting. Definitely going to need to get some more of those. And I really want to see that one in the package, so... Wish I was able to find two, but I wasn't, so we're going to leave it in the package for now. Nissan Skyline 2000 GTR, making its appearance in the main line. Corvette Grand Sport Roadster. I believe there is a super treasure hunt of this car available somewhere. I don't collect treasure hunts because I never find them in the wild, and I don't want to spend $20 to $40 on them in the secondary market. So that's why you don't see them on this channel all that often. Uh, Volkswagen Beetle makes a return to the segment in the holiday racers um, not a big fan of these red wheels but i get what they're trying to do with the holiday racers and all that it would be a good wheel swap though in my opinion 17 acura nsx absolutely gorgeous car for the hot wheel turbo segment and we've got two cars left to look at one is the mercedes-benz a-class 2019 i think that was a new model in 2019 so we're, it's a popular one and Mattel Games this is a new segment for the 55 Chevy Bel Air Gasser. Uh, Guster is called. I don't know anything about this because I don't play the Mattel Games online. But if you do, you can let me know more about it. It almost looks like a SpongeBob type paint job on this uh, beautiful 55 Gasser Chevy. And, uh, well, uh, you know, it's still cool. So that's all the cars, the Hot Wheels that I was able to pick up locally at the store as the lockdown lifted here in Canada in the last week or two. Uh, made shopping a, a joy once again. And uh, I also found this Mercedes AMG GT 63S four-door matchbox car. Pretty cool, very nice car. So that will also find its way to the display rack. And one final car that's gonna come out for a roll today is this Flying Customs Maverick. Let's see what those gold hot ones do. I'm always looking forward to rolling one of these gold hot one cars. They just roll so nice. And all these cars look fantastic together. So let's go in for a closer look at everything. Move aside some of the packaging. Get all these vehicles out side by side. They just look fantastic together. It really doesn't matter what the brand is. Um, all these little die cast cars in my collection and uh some of them will make it to the junkyard diorama i think probably the station wagon for sure the condor might be a little too shiny i don't know maybe it'll find its way in there and uh well the rest are going to go into the diecast museum if i could find a space for them that is let's go find out where those are going to go so as we depart the review table i can tell you not too many of these cars are going on the diecast diorama junkyard as that is mainly limited for the most detailed of models that I have. And well, the Hot Wheel wall is still full right up to 2005. And I don't have any room to display loose cars after that in the uh, diecast room part one. But a lot of the um, cars, the 2021 cars, will replace these 2020 models on my uh, kind of factory store display from a Canadian tire store years ago. And these cars have been sitting here for months. Well, since last year, essentially. So I'm going to be putting those away into storage. Big Tubware tote. And uh, I may look at these cars with you as we go. But I know that a lot of these cars are kind of yesterday's news. And people are looking to the 2021 cars to see uh, what has been released. There we found Nina. She's over here just chilling. 
having a little chill. It's pretty muggy and warm upstairs right now, the summer weather. And, uh, well, here's the rest of the collection. I've got room to put some more Plano cases on the wall here. I took them down originally as I was kind of moving things around. That was back in the winter. And I never really made any new room as far as putting more back up. But uh, I do have this big, huge shelf that accommodates quite a few green light cars, including station wagons, uh, trucks, and even M2 stuff. Auto World in here in this display case. You got those Cadillacs, some big old Hot Wheels 100% hearses. And this is what's been going on in the rest of the Diecast Museum. It may have been a little while since we looked around. Haven't done anything more with my Lego. That kind of dried up. I do have a lot of Lego, but, uh, you know, summer comes and times get busy. I do have some room on this wall over here, which mostly houses uh, M2 products. And uh, I think there's some Mini GT, but we've got room for... That uh, square body truck down in there with the other ones. And there's some more Mini GT models. We're kind of standing across in the room. There's really not much room to squeeze in between the table and that wall there, thanks to all these Lego displays. But, you know, that's a, that's a project I'm going to clean up in the uh, coming year. The next year, I guess. <laughs> next winter. It's getting all this kind of sorted back out uh Kind of just filling up my museum a little more than I had intended. The uh, sofa is quite large, of course. So, and I really don't use it for anything other than sitting just my own hiney down. And, well, this room's just a total loss. <laughs> As you can see, I need to do some major cleanup in there. The storage overflow room has just been inundated with uh, the winter Lego binge that I did. I was buying these uh, kind of as an investment, I guess. I've had second thoughts on that decision, but hey, I'm stuck with them now, so deal with that. Future years. And, uh, well, there's there's all the Hot Wheels that need to be reviewed in the upcoming year-by-year -year videos. This is a huge floor-to-ceiling racking system just filled with totes behind all these boxes. Uh, Hot Wheels organized year-by-year -year and in that closet, so... Well, you can see, like, the work is done for me for the most part. I just got to get through the year-by-year -year videos. So, speaking of which, that's going to be your next video, most likely, on this channel. I'm going to try and get one of those out this week. It'll be uh, Hot Wheels, more Blue Card Era Cars, episode 12, I believe we're on. So, look forward to that. And if you're after anything that you've seen in this video, I hope you can find it. Happy hunting. Enjoy the hunt. And, of course, uh, take care of yourself and each other.